I'm Zachary Fowler and this is how to make your own awesome survival strike anywhere match that'll never leave you in the dark. I've been on this journey for a long time trying to find a good strike anywhere match. People are always asking me what are these matches for in my hat and I think they're so I can light a fire, but they're not. I have been shooting a slingshot for almost two years now and when I first started out I saw Bill Hayes and the guy can light a match sometimes three or four right in a row. He's so accurate at 33 feet and even he's taken a couple at like 60 feet. So I wanted to be able to do the same. And as I started out I realized that some of these matches that you purchase in like the ones you buy at any store nowadays you can't even get. They only strike on the box. So I looked around and I started finding matches that would actually work for me and then even the best ones I could find to purchase online, they didn't work all that well. They would tend to, um, one in every 10 would go off if you're just trying to strike it on a piece of brick. And it was just, it was frustrating. The best ones I found so far are these. Pinelli, you know, and you know, they still didn't work that great. People said dry them out, all this stuff. So I did some more research and I found that I could make my own strike anywhere matches. And that's what we're gonna do today. So I got two different methods here for you for making your own Strike Anywhere matches. One uses caps, and caps can be emptied out, and you make a slurry. I got my little grinder here. We're gonna make a slurry and dip the match heads of these ones and make them a hundred times more efficient, like this one you see here I used in my turkey video. And I mean, the thing is almost explosive. And then we're also gonna take a small candle and dip them once they're done so that they are waterproof and I'm going to replace the ones that are in my hat which I just put those in there because I was a one out one day to shoot my slingshot and uh, I try to shoot three matches a day to see if I can light one up. The second way is the boxes have red phosphorus and that's what allows a strike only on the box or even a strike anywhere box match to light up so easily when you strike them on the box. The red phosphorus if we scrape that off of here and make a concoction we can dip the heads in that and make the match so when you strike it on any surface, it flares right up. You get enough of it, it's doable. But, I don't think it's worth it. I want to make some that the whole head, anywhere you strike it, these things go off. So, we're going to skip right ahead to doing it with these. This is uh, red phosphorus and potassium chloride and these things go boom when you bump them and I got some of these and empty these out and made a concoction and these are the ones that's the one from this video that just really goes pop so the concoction of uh, red phosphorus and potassium chloride are held into the caps by a little wad of paper and the best way to get that out is literally just to squeeze them gently with the multi-tool right here so that if from behind you grab it and give it a squeeze and give it a squeeze they dump out their little pile of concoction wow so this takes a while so I'm gonna listen to my audiobook you can watch me and fast forward in a couple seconds from now we will put some matches together mix up a concoction here we go dangerous move because he could have snapped but he folded over like an old playing card last I heard he'd been washing dishes at a Mexican restaurant Military vehicles by the score. This entrance point. I was just thinking to say something about make sure that when you squeeze these, you don't squeeze them too hard and you keep it above your paper. But I think now, make sure when you clear one of these, if you're making these matches, you clear one, you move the bulkier material away so you don't lose it all in one shot. I just lost everything, even what was in my mortar and pestle, all ready to go. It all went up in a quick whew. If at first you don't succeed, try again, right? Time to upgrade my weapon, I said, staring at my pistol. And once you're done safely extracting the remaining potassium chlorate and red phosphorus, you're gonna to wanna to separate the waddings, then get a little bit of water and put it in a teacup from my daughter's <laughs> set. I'm use a, uh, I'm just gonna use the vanilla dropper so I can accurately, oops. Put a little bit of water in there, just enough so the whole thing turns into a paste. And as a binding agent, I use 
Type on three, waterproof wood glue. I'm gonna put one good drip of wood glue to act as a bonding agent. And I'm gonna use a match. Now that it's wet, mixing it all up shouldn't be a problem. It shouldn't flare up or have any issues like earlier. There we go, now that it's definitely wet, I can use the little mortar and pestle and I can just grind it all up good. All right, there we go, it went to, from chunky to a nice smooth paste. Now it's time to dip the matches. There we go, give the heads a nice coating and they're ready to go. Just place them on the duct tape strip and dry them out. That's 11 and I still got enough to get I don't know, seven or eight more. I'm gonna hang these up in front of the wood stove, make some more, and then when they're dry, we will make them waterproof, and I'll show you how well they work. All right, it's five o'clock in the morning, and these have dried overnight. I managed to get 35 of them, despite burning up half of my uh, spark stock. And uh, I tried one out downstairs on the bricks of the fireplace, and man, they work awesome. Very stoked about these, this is a, they turned out great. Check this out. Boom. First strike every time. Now it's time to waterproof them. Got myself a little tea light, keep it simple. Ah. Should have used that, I could have just lit the, well, I'll use one that's not my strike anyways. I have plans for these. I'm gonna light these with my slingshot, and or three of them are going up here in the hat. Fire up the tea light. All right, so I got a little fidget spinner tin from my kids that uh, I'm gonna keep them in. They got some foam in here. It's not airtight. So I'm still going to keep it in my, you know, Folgers cup here that seals and uh, cut out a little piece of foam here, put it in there so I can fill it with my matches. These are very sensitive matches. I do not recommend just carrying them around in if they're not coated in wax um, and placed in something that keeps them from jostling each other. I can see these things going off. This looks like the kind of concoction that caused uh, matches like this to be deemed unsafe and everywhere to everybody to start this whole strike on the box thing. I'll pick out three here to dip in the dip in the wax and pop in my hat. There's one, and I'll dip up two or three more so that we can test them out. Now, I've also heard that uh, nail polish instead of uh, wax, I can see that working pretty good too as a waterproofing. I'm gonna leave the rest of them just the way they are because those are for lighting with my slingshot. I grabbed a cup of water. Matches are dry now, they're all waxy. Let's give them the uh, ultimate test here. Drop, drop them right in. Boom. Give them a little swirl. Shaken, not stirred. Shaken, not stirred. Shaken, not stirred. Too shake. And Fish them back out. Three matches. Gave them a dunking. Let's see how they do. Woo! So they take a little extra one or two strikes there because of the uh, wax on them, but they, they spark up. Whoa! That one really sparked up. Yeehaw! Whoa, there we go, three for three. The ultimate, do it yourself. Make your own survival matches. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Got my crazy morning hair and my new survival matches. Fowler out.